Red Sky Night. Sailor's Delight. Red Sky in the Morning. Sailors Take Warning. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 50 myths and urban legends about famous places, people, phenomena, and more that turned out to be real. The thought of a parasite crawling under my skin would cause me to start itching. Animals in the Toilet. How could an animal possibly get into someone's toilet, especially with modern plumbing? The networks of curving pipes, flowing water, and germ-killing chemicals are enough to deter most creatures, but not all. Snakes are particularly good at navigating pipes, and they like cool places. They've been spotted in toilets around the world. Everybody asked me, why, did I, why didn't I video camera take pictures? Well, that wasn't my first concern when I see a snake coming out of the toilet. And while they're not usually venomous, you still don't want to sit on one. The other most common culprits are rats. These hardy rodents can climb, swim, and wriggle through tiny spaces with amazing agility. However, someone who has just been bitten on the butt while trying to use the bathroom may not be so impressed. Someone hiding in the back seat. Oh no, what's this? A woman is driving home at night when suddenly the car behind her starts flashing its headlights or the gas station attendant tries to get her attention. It turns out they were trying to alert her to the man hiding in her back seat. The details seem to be made up, but there have been cases where men have snuck into women's cars, although the urban legend precedes them. In 2013, a man got into a woman's van while she was at a gas station in Hammond, Indiana and abducted her. Three years later, a woman was parking her car in Maple Ridge, British Columbia, Canada, when a man popped up in the back seat, causing her to crash. She ran away, as did the suspect. <laughs> Killer elevators. We're sure it sounds familiar. A person steps into an elevator, but suddenly it goes crazy and kills them. While such incidents are rare, they have happened. In 2003, a 35-year-old surgical resident in Texas was entering a hospital elevator after his colleague when the doors began to close and didn't stop. The doctor was trapped between them. Though his colleague frantically pushed the emergency stop button, it was too late. The elevator began going up. With his upper body inside the car and his lower body outside, the doctor didn't stand a chance. Obviously, multiple safety measures usually prevent this sort of thing. The incident was blamed on faulty wiring. The Toxic Lady. You can't. <coughs> 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 Her real name was Gloria Ramirez. She had late-stage cervical cancer and was deteriorating rapidly when she came to the ER. She died less than an hour later. But Ramirez had a bizarre effect on the hospital staff. Multiple people who treated her suffered odd symptoms. Fainting, shortness of breath, even temporary paralysis. For the autopsy, six days later, the coroner's office built a specially sealed room and the staff was protected with hazardous duty suits. Afterwards, everyone was hosed down with decontaminants. A team wearing hazmat suits performed her autopsy, but couldn't explain why those around her had fallen ill. Most experts dismissed it as mass hysteria, until the coroner's office found that Ramirez had been trying to treat herself with dimethyl sulfone cream. When exposed to oxygen, this creates a vapor that affects people like poison gas. I asked the nurse to start an IV that about coincidentally at the same time I smelt, you know, ammonia. To me it was ammonia. And I kind of made a comment that, you know, that's really strong ammonia. And I kind of felt, you know, like I was going to pass out then. A secret murder. Although Betsy Ardsma died in 1969, the circumstances of her death were so strange that the case still haunts Penn State University. Ardsma, a graduate student, was browsing in an aisle of the library when people nearby heard books falling. They found her lying senseless on the floor, and she was brought to the campus hospital, where a doctor was shocked to discover something no one else suspected. Artsma had been murdered. 
the killer had only stabbed her once and in such a way that she hardly bled at all. Because it took so long to realize a crime had been committed, most evidence at the scene was lost. The phantom killer was never found. Dead people mistaken for Halloween decorations. In fact, I didn't know what happened until I'd already went by. I saw the blood. That was part of a 911 call made by a man in Tennessee who was heading to work. He made the call after he saw what appeared to be a dead body lying in his neighbor's driveway. You've probably noticed that Halloween decorations have been getting more and more gruesome and realistic. This has led to a strange problem, people mistaking real dead bodies for fake ones. This happened in 2005 in Frederica, Delaware, and in 2009 in Marina del Rey, California, after the bodies of people who had taken their own lives were thought to be Halloween pranks. There was another case in 2014 in Spring Hills, Florida, after a man hanged himself in his garage. A pair of handymen found the body, assumed it was a mannequin, and brought it to a dump, only for the landfill workers to note that it was in fact a corpse. All four of them convinced themselves that it was some Halloween-type prop uh, obviously they felt it was very realistic. That's because it was real. Maybe we should tone down the decorations just a little bit. Buried alive. Take care, Murph. <laughs> Being buried alive is many people's biggest fear, and it has certainly happened before when people have been falsely declared dead. Horrifyingly, it's also happened on purpose. In 1987, an Illinois businessman was kidnapped and held for ransom. For some weird reason, the kidnappers buried him in a box with water and a breathing tube. <laughs> Unfortunately, the tube failed and by the time police arrived, he was dead. There was another case in 2020 when a man in Jingbian County, Shaanxi Province, China, allegedly buried his 79-year-old mother in a shallow grave. Miraculously, she was reportedly rescued by police who dug her out. <laughs> Bodies in rugs. You may have seen this in movies before. A murderer rolls their victim up in a rug and carries it off without arousing suspicion. It's happened enough in real life to make you wonder if fiction inspired reality or the other way around. For one thing, a discarded carpet doesn't usually attract much attention. In Douglasville, Georgia, a body rolled up in a carpet inside an abandoned house wasn't discovered for months in 2022. Of course, if someone's feet happen to be sticking out of the rug, it's a little more noticeable. A pedestrian spotted one like that in Manhattan in 2019. In both cases, police were unable to determine what had happened. So beware, a rug may be more sinister than it seems. <laughs> Secret sharers. I'm like, who the heck are you? What are you, wh why are you in my house? And she keeps kind of going, this is my house. I live here. I've been here for three days. Ever misplace something at home? You were sure it was right there, but somehow it's in another room. Well, probably you're just misremembering. Otherwise, it's a ghost. Or worse, a secret sharer living in your house. It may sound impossible, but people have pulled it off. In 2017, a woman in Arlington, Virginia, thought she heard footsteps overhead after moving into a new apartment. Six months later, she found the attic door open and discovered someone had been living there. She never knew who it was. In 2008, a Japanese man noticed food and other items going missing, so he installed security cameras in his house. It turned out that a woman was living above his closet and had gone undetected for a year. <laughs> dead people in drinking water. When they peered inside, uh, they saw that Elisa Lam was floating face up. She was in a considerable state of decomposition. Sorry, we know it's gross, but it does occasionally happen. One famous case in 2013 was at the Cecil Hotel in California. Guests complained that the water coming from their taps had a strange color and smell. As it turned out, a young woman's body was in the hotel water tank she had gone missing a few weeks earlier. More recently, as the western U.S. faces a terrible drought, people have been disturbed to find that Lake Mead, one of the largest drinking water reservoirs in the country, 
contains a number of dead bodies, which are now being exposed as the water recedes. If it makes you feel any better, drinking water that's been around a corpse isn't usually harmful, just really, really disturbing. Bugs living in people. When an insect flies into your eye or some other part of your face, it's bad for everyone, including the insect, which will likely be swatted. It's the bugs who enjoy being inside people that are truly horrifying. Take itch mites. Adult mites will often seek out a new host. They do this by hitching a ride on sheets, linens, or through skin-to-skin -skin contact. They're so tiny, you don't even know they've burrowed into your flesh until you develop an itchy rash. You may also be interested to know that some flies pass on parasitic loa loa worms when they bite. These worms swim around beneath your skin and your eyes, sometimes visibly. They can also inflate your brain and kill you. But unfortunately, getting rid of them is very difficult. If that freaks you out, trust us, you're not alone. The doctors prepare the girl for a difficult procedure. So they lay her in this chair. I felt helpless, you know, worried. Organ trafficking. What do you got? Liver. What's that? Liver. What are you, hanging out at AA meetings? Although lurid stories about travelers being drugged and waking up missing a kidney have been fabricated, organ trafficking does exist. Desperate need has led to a black market system where people pay huge sums to receive organ transplants without government oversight. But who are the donors? People as desperate as the ones needing transplants. Refugees, unemployed migrants, families living in abject poverty. They are offered money for their blood or organs. But if they accept, the money often turns out to be less than promised. Weakness from medical procedures puts them entirely in the power of the traffickers. Sometimes truth is not only stranger, but also stranger and sadder than fiction. He's always reminded of what was stolen from him by his car. His body has to adapt to just one kidney. Chicken soup for the sick. You know, that bed is sounding better and better. <laughs> Finish your soup, young lady. <laughs> It's long been held that if you're ill, nothing will ease your symptoms quite like chicken soup. The home remedy has practically become synonymous with things that are good for you. But what does science have to say about the matter? After all, it could be a placebo effect or simply nostalgia. However, several studies have shown that the ingredients in chicken soup may shorten the duration of a cold as well as help with inflammation. While the research is far from definitive, there's enough to suggest that chicken soup is more than just a comfort meal. I don't want it. I want ice cream. No, you're not having ice cream for dinner just because you're sick. But my throat hurts. No! I hate you! Oh. Don't leave me. Hot baths cause infertility. Oh. <laughs> what? The bath salts. They're starting to effervesce. <laughs> it's different. It's interesting. <laughs> Hot water can have a ton of health benefits, but conventional wisdom has long held that it also has a downside, decreased fertility. Rumors have frequently suggested that men spending prolonged time in a hot, wet environment like baths, hot tubs, or saunas will have a lower sperm count than those who don't. However, following a study at the University of California, San Francisco, it was confirmed that the practice can lower motility and production of sperm. But fans of hot soaks should not despair. The effects are generally temporary, and discontinuing while trying to conceive can be helpful. Who put this thing together? Me! That's who! Who do I trust? Me! Walnuts remove furniture scratches. So I want to talk about repairs, kind of abrasions on furniture and also on different hardwoods. Okay. And the best way to, to do it is just to demonstrate it, just to dive right into it. If you have any wood in your house and a pet, chances are some of it has gotten scratched. A long-standing trick for removing those scratches is, of all things, walnuts. It may sound ridiculous or like it'd only work on walnut wood, but as many videos on the internet have illustrated, it's very true. By rubbing the large seeds, no, they're not proper nuts, against the scratches, 
you can fill in the grooves as the walnut is worn down. Remove a large piece of nut from the shell and rub it diagonally into the scratch. Pecans, almonds, and Brazil nuts will also work. There are a few finishes it won't work on, but using walnuts is cheaper than more professional products, and they taste better too, we assume. Hi, my Yorkshire Terrier has chewed up the legs on my kitchen table. Is there a cheap way to repair that? Great question. Take a walnut and rub it into the legs of your table. That'll mask the scratches. Honey suppresses coughs. Antifungal, antibiotic, uh, different vitamins um, and minerals in there. Um, but generally, they keep us ticking over. They are one of our biggest pollinators, so they're a great health-giving provider and always have been. As far as folk medicine goes, it doesn't get much simpler than honey. While wives both young and old have prescribed honey as a cough suppressant, whether added to tea or on its own, doctors are well aware of its benefits too. According to doctors at the Mayo Clinic, a few teaspoons of honey can be just as effective as over-the-counter cough suppressants in reducing coughs. And while coughing can help clear up your airways, it can make getting to sleep difficult. Honey is exactly the sweet, soothing texture and makeup to calm down the reflex before bed or any other time. Though not suitable for children under one, a spoonful of honey really could be the best medicine. Eating before bed causes vivid dreams. I am a snacker, so I'll get up in the middle of the night and I'll eat ice cream or I'll, I'll eat chocolate or something and I'll just go back to bed. Our parents and guardians often tell us not to eat before going to bed or else we'll have bad dreams. While kids are often reluctant to follow this advice, it's still surprisingly sound. In addition to a host of other issues, like making it more difficult to fall asleep, eating before bed can lead to unsettling, vivid or disturbing dreams in some people. Also, for whatever reason, cheese seems to be a particularly good fuel for odd nighttime imagery. But whether your sweet dreams are made of cheese or not, your late night snacking may be the culprit. Uh, how long before you go to bed or lay down should you stop eating? What? Oh, how does that work? Ideally, it should be three hours. We know the stomach on average takes about two and a half to three hours to empty. Baby boys cause more difficult births. Breathe, breathe. Pregnancy has a lot of old wives' tales surrounding it. While it was tempting to discuss the correlation between hairy infants and maternal heartburn during pregnancy, yes, really, we went with another pregnancy-related rumour that turned out to be true. Folk wisdom holds that baby boys are more likely to cause complications for mothers during their births, such as preeclampsia or to be born preterm. Sybil, it's Mary. Can you hear me? <laughs> it looks as if... It looks as if what? This is eclampsia. Sybil. 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 But it cannot Mary. be. Although male infants tending to be larger at birth seems like an easy answer, a study in Australia confirmed that there's more to it. The differences in the placenta is believed to be the root cause of these differences between boys and girls being born, though the exact correlation is still being researched. Carrots improve eyesight. We're squinting a bit with this one. Conventional wisdom and British World War II propaganda, yes, really, popularised the idea that eating lots of carrots improves your eyesight. And while drinking a bunch of carrot juice or eating a pound of carrots every week isn't going to get your eyes to improve, studies have shown that the beta-carotene in it can help with vitamin A deficiency, one of the leading causes of blindness. Do you know what weird dreams make me? What? Hungry. Would you like some carrot? Yes. So, despite not elevating your eyesight to above average levels, carrots can help prevent it from getting worse. Carrots are packed with vitamin A, which our eyes need, but sweet potatoes have even more vitamin A. Ah. And by the way, we need a whole lot more than vitamin A for healthy eyes, so it's really a general, balanced, healthy mm -hmm. diet. Being cold can make you catch a cold. Do we have to, Mary Poppins? People who get their feet wet must learn to take their medicine. Don't go outside in that. You'll catch a cold. Bundle up. We've all probably heard something like this at some point in our lives. But our friend, who insists on going out in freezing weather in just a t-shirt, is about to look very foolish. Well, more foolish. According to a 2005 study, subjects whose feet were exposed to cold temperatures were more likely to display cold or flu-like symptoms within a week of their exposure than those who weren't. Oh. Tea soup and covers. I want you to stay under the covers, eat your soup, 
and drink your tea. And while cold weather certainly isn't the root cause of illness, it may suppress the immune system, making us more likely to contract sicknesses. Red sky at night, sailors delight. Long before there were weather reports or even weather apps, people predicted the weather through weather folklore. And there's one saying that has stood the test of time. Even today, we don't need to finish it. This adage is so old, it was in the Bible. The saying goes that red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky at morning, sailors take warning. Mariners know their stuff in this case. In middle latitudes, where winds travel west to east, this helps sailors and others forecast the weather. High pressure in the atmosphere can change the colour of light particles, indicating a storm. Ah! Yeah! That was nothing! Hence, if you see red skies in the morning, it means a storm is on its way. And at night, it means a storm has passed. Sailing around the equator or the polar regions would probably require different, less catchy sayings, though. Jesus An apple a day keeps the doctor away. An apple a day keeps the, uh... No, never mind. This handy rhyme has been passed down since the 19th century. And while it might seem like a way for parents to get kids to eat healthier, there is some truth to this admonition to eat more fruit. Several studies have found links between consuming more apples and other foods high in antioxidants and a decreased risk in certain serious ailments, like cancer or heart disease. So, while apples may not help you ward off common illnesses, eating a bushel of the stuff can help with the big, serious afflictions. Plus, they're delicious. Turns out an apple pie a day does not keep the doctor away. <laughs> the city of Tanea. According to mythology, after the Trojan War, a bunch of prisoners were taken to the island of Tenedos. Eventually, Agamemnon, the king of Mycenae, allowed them to create a settlement, which became the city of Tanea. The location also played a part in the story of Oedipus, who famously had a whole complex named after him. But Tanea eventually vanished from the records and was seemingly a fictional place. That was until 1846, when the Kouros of Tanea was found in the area. Then in 1984, a sarcophagus was discovered by local villagers and archaeologist Elena Korka. In 2013, Korka led an excavation of the site. Since then, various ancient items and the remains of Tanea's buildings have been discovered. Orichalcum. It was Cadmus that brought the making of bronze. He knew how to make alloys, special metals, which in the early days of civilization was the beginning of technology. When you think of the most precious materials in the world, orichalcum wouldn't be considered. However, to the ancient Greeks, this metal was believed to only be behind gold in value. In Plato's Critias, he speaks of the walls of some of Atlantis's buildings being decked out with the unusual material. He described the metal as, quote, flashing with the red light. The copper tint of this metal caught the attention of the seekers that came to this sacred place. While many believed orichalcum to be a work of fiction, in 2015, a discovery was made. Off the coast of Gela in Sicily, a 2,600-year-old shipwreck was located. On board were 39 ingots made from seemingly orichalcum. Scientists discovered the material was an alloy, primarily made from copper and zinc, but also had traces of lead, nickel, and iron. The Golden Fleece. Get the fleece. In mythology, looking to become king of Iolcus, Jason and the Argonauts set out to claim the Golden Fleece of Chrysomalos, which has long ties to his heritage. When do we sail? Tomorrow. As the name suggests, the sought-after item was a fleece made from gold. During a perilous journey filled with one ridiculous task after another, Jason manages to get the iconic item from a grove in Colchis, located in modern-day Georgia. Well, this tale might be based on fact. Back then, sheep fleeces were used to collect gold flakes from rivers and streams. And several of these gold-rich water sources were in Georgia and mentioned in Jason's tale. As such, it's likely the Golden Fleece is talking about this ancient way of prospecting. The Fleece! Give me the Fleece! It has the power to heal. The Chimera. Give away! It's going to catch his fire! 
probably one of the most terrifying creatures from Greek mythology. The fire-breathing chimera is typically depicted as having the head of a lion, a goat, and a snake-headed tail. According to Homer's Iliad, Bellerophon defeated the beast in Lycia, modern-day Turkey. Well, it's likely a real location that inspired this story. In Yanartosh, near the ancient city of Olympus in Turkey, is Mount Chimera. Legend has it that a fire-breathing monster was killed here by a Greek god and its breath lives on beneath the rocks. On the slopes are fires that are still burning centuries later, which have natural gas vents below feeding them. On top of this, the area is said to have been inhabited by lions, snakes, and goats at one point. Suspicious. As the rocks of Yanartash continue to burn, geologists are continuing their search for more deposits like these. Plutonian at Herapolis, nicknamed Pluto's Gate, these areas were thought to be entrances to the underworld in ancient Greece. This magnificent place hides a dark secret. Legend says that beneath these streets lies the gate to hell. Named Plutonian after the god Pluto, who was previously called Hades, animal sacrifice was a common practice there, especially at the site in ancient Herapolis in modern-day Turkey. During a ceremony, a priest would take an animal into the eerie depths. The rising toxic gas would then cause the creature to pass away, but the human to live. They believed the gas was sent by Pluto. However, after the cave was discovered in 2011, studies have shown the gas is pockets of carbon dioxide from seismic activity. It's amazing that the myth was not only a myth, but it is a reality. The priests would hold their breaths to escape the effects and be celebrated for making it through Pluto's sacrifice. The priests likely believe the deadly vapors rise straight from the underworld. They almost certainly believed it was the gates of hell and that this was the only way they could survive it. Cyclops Riviera. Lying east of Sicily is a stretch of coastline known as the Cyclops Riviera. And what famous myth prominently features a cyclops? That's right, Homer's Odyssey. The story of Odysseus, called the Odyssey, was written by a Greek poet named Homer. The Odyssey is one of the defining Greek epics, written around the 8th century BCE. It contains a character named Polyphemus, who is the Cyclopean son of Poseidon and Thusa. Polyphemus antagonizes Odysseus and his men by trapping them in a cave and attempting to hit them with giant rocks. The sight of him sends Odysseus and his men cowering into a dark corner. These are the very same rocks that can be found off the coast of the Cyclops Riviera, their brown peaks poking through the Mediterranean. Nakma Hill Officially known as Nakmeda, Nakma Hill is a large mound found in Western Ireland. This area is said to be the home of a Celtic fairy named Finvada. Finvara is the king of the Ishi, a group of fairies found in Celtic mythology. Finvara and his fairies have been closely linked with the area's crops. When they won battles, the crops would bloom and be healthy. If Finvara was away from home, or if the surrounding area was disturbed by battle, then it would experience famine. Some legends even name Finvara as the ruler or king of the dead. Nakma Hill contains a few giant cairns of prehistoric origin, one of which is said to be the burial place of the fairy king. Takachiho. Amaterasu is a deity in Japanese mythology, serving as the goddess of the sun. Her grandson is Ninigi no Mikoto, who was sent to Earth by Amaterasu. Ninigi brought with him the three sacred treasures, which helped establish the Imperial House of Japan. Ninigi is also said to be the great-grandfather of Emperor Jimu, who, according to Japanese legend, was the first emperor of Japan. Ninigi landed on Earth in the town of Takachiho, which lies in southern Japan in the region of Kyushu. Today, Takachiho is home to approximately 12,000 people. Xanadu Kublai Khan is a very famous poem written by the English romantic poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Coleridge reportedly wrote the poem after experiencing an intense opium dream, but only 54 of the planned 300 lines were ever finished. The epic poem describes a seemingly mythical location known as Xanadu, which is said to be the pleasure dome of Kublai Khan. Well, Kublai Khan was in fact a real person, and Xanadu is a real place. The new city, which was later immortalized in European literature as Xanadu, aroused concern among Mongol traditionalists. It's officially called Shangdu, and it served as an administrative capital of the Yuan dynasty, which was established by Kublai Khan in the late 13th century. Shangdu was once visited by Marco Polo, and it was made a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2012. Tintagel Castle 
King Arthur is arguably the most popular literary hero in the Western canon, as his story has been endlessly told and retold throughout the centuries. Many real locations are associated with the Arthurian legend. The mythical island of Avalon has been identified as Glastonbury Tor, and while many locations have been put forth as the real Camelot, many agree that it was Cadbury Castle in Somerset. But we're here for Tintagel Castle, which is found in North Cornwall. This area has been inhabited since the early Middle Ages, and Geoffrey of Monmouth wrote in his Historia Regum Britanniae that Tintagel Castle was the site of King Arthur's conception. A modern path called Arthur's Way now stretches between the Tintagel and Cadbury castles. The Oracle at Delphi One of the top jobs in ancient Greece involved being the Pythia at the Temple of Apollo. At any given time, a single oracle known as the Pythia communicates Apollo's will. Also known as the Oracle of Delphi, the high priestess was visited by many, including rulers. She would go to a chamber and inhale the vapors from a crack in a rock putting her into a trance as she gave advice. In antiquity, just like today, people had a lot of uncertainties in life, and they presumed that the gods knew more than they did. However, this occasionally caused delirium or led to their demise. When the temple was excavated in the late 1800s, the mystical vapor wasn't present, so it was thought of as a myth. However, in 2001, geological studies found fault zones underneath the site. Researchers believe the vapor was a hydrocarbon gas, in a nearby water source, ethylene was discovered, which was once used as an anesthetic. Scholars think water running underground could have carried gases up through the fault lines directly to the priestess. Amazon Warriors When thinking of Amazon Warriors, Wonder Woman would probably be the first thing to spring to mind. The second is that they're fictional, but are they? Ancient Greece was fascinated by them. As such, they were featured in many stories, including the labors of Hercules, and showcased their superior combat skills and strength over Greek folk. Amazon battle scenes decorated the Parthenon on the Athenian Acropolis. Paintings and statues of Amazons adorned temples and public spaces. In 2019, a tomb in the Voronezh region in Russia was excavated. The archaeologists found the remains of four women warriors from three generations buried together. They found an elaborate golden headdress, weapons, and other goods within. The women's skeletons show battle injuries, ribs slashed by swords, skulls bashed by battle axes, and arrows embedded in bones. While the remains were officially credited to be Scythian nomads, some researchers believe they are the basis for the Amazon legend. Atlantis. An ancient structure bears a striking resemblance to a stone staircase. But is it natural or man-made? Since Plato wrote about the island of Atlantis in his work, the human race has been fascinated with the place. Within his tales, Plato describes the utopian island from its highest point to its lowest, when the gods sunk it into the ocean's depths. While Atlantis is thought of as fictional, the story might not be. Instead, it could be based on an actual natural disaster that swallowed an island. One example is the volcanic eruption and earthquake that turned the singular island of Santorini, previously known as Thera, into an archipelago. The quake also created tsunamis, which swept over other settlements. This devastated the highly advanced Minoan civilization, which was effectively wiped out. There is a huge amount of unrecorded human history beneath the ocean surface that we don't know very much about at all. Oarfish might be the real sea serpents. Tales of sea monsters have pervaded human society the world over ever since we began to sail the seas. Even today we're still discovering new animals in the depths of the ocean. One of the most frequently cited mythical sea creatures is the sea serpent, a giant snake-like creature that lives in the deep. Oarfish are one of these strange exotic fish that really catch people's attention. So when they do appear, uh, they lead to speculation. Like a sea serpent myth. As it turns out, there is a creature whose shape matches that description, possibly explaining some sightings. For years, we only knew they existed from the occasional one washed ashore. They have hardly ever been seen alive. However, it's not a snake, but a fish. The oarfish has an incredibly long, undulating body, with the longest confirmed specimen reaching 26 feet, 
although unconfirmed reports have some possibly reaching almost double that length. I think more people have seen the Earth from space than have seen one of these this close. Komodo dragons. A huge lizard living on a remote island sounds like something from legends or someone's tall tale. The Komodo dragon is a modern day dinosaur at the peak of its powers. Westerners were initially skeptical about the existence of this Komodo dragon, and it wasn't until 1910 that Europeans first documented the beasts. So these are Komodo dragons, the largest lizards on Earth, and just extraordinarily broad, powerful. A 1926 expedition to Komodo Island to bring a live specimen to New York served as the inspiration for the movie King Kong. We can imagine an alternate universe where the title ended up being King Komodo instead. Some zoologists believe it could be a subspecies of another large lizard which in the past lived on the continent of Asia in regions ruled over by the Chinese. They're now popular zoo attractions worldwide, looking very much like something from a lost ancient world. Unicorn horns really belonged to narwhals. Supposed unicorn horns were objects of fascination and great value throughout the Middle Ages. However, as it turns out, people who dreamt of one day spotting the creatures to whom the horns belonged should have set their sights on the sea rather than land. The mysterious narwhal has inspired myths around the world. In the Middle Ages, the narwhal tusk was sold as a unicorn horn. Physicians believed it could cure the plague, increase virility, detect poison, and even raise the dead. Many of the unicorn horns traded during this period were actually narwhal tusks, retrieved by Vikings during their exploration of the Arctic. These whales' status as the unicorns of the sea was confirmed when more explorers began to sail into the far north. Their three-meter tusk is in fact no more than an overgrown canine tooth. But its exact function, like so much about narwhals, is still in part a mystery. Fun fact! Only the males have tusks. They act as a distinguishing feature, much like antlers on male deer. But whether it's a joust or a jaw session is anybody's guess. And the narwhals aren't telling. Oh, copy. What if you crossed a zebra with a giraffe? The result would probably look something like the okapi, and people would be just as likely to believe it was made up. Such was the case with Europeans in Africa, who suspected the creature said to inhabit forests of the Congo was a local myth and not a real animal. Its elusiveness and the horn-like protrusions on the heads of males have even given it the nickname the African Unicorn. Europeans didn't discover the okapi until the late 19th and early 20th century, when its myth became reality. Manatees might be the real mermaids. Not every mythical sea creature is malevolent. Sailors have frequently sighted seeing beautiful women with fishtails in the ocean, mermaids. And uh, early uh, explorers that came over to the New World, like Columbus, wrote in their logbooks about seeing mermaids. It's hard to believe that they ever mistaken that face for <laughs> that of a, of a mermaid, but evidently those boys had been on the boat a little too long. However, the reality is probably not as glamorous as the myth. One of the possible origins for the mermaid myth is the manatee. These gentle sea cows are often spotted from and sadly injured and killed by boats, particularly in the Caribbean. And as you can see, many of these manatees, if not all of them, have some evidence of their interaction with boats. And we could see how, from a distance, they might resemble something more human-like than other ocean residents. Let's go get some tail! <laughs> While we certainly wouldn't want to romance them, manatees are pretty adorable. Platypus. Ah, Manny the Platypus, what an unexpected surprise! A lot of Europeans were skeptical of the animals reported by explorers in Australia. We mean, a deer that hops like a frog and some of them have two heads? That's just ridiculous! But easily the most unbelievable animal from the land down under, at least to Europeans, was the platypus, with its webbed feet, beaver-like body, and bill reminiscent of a duck's. And it goes from cute to killer in an instant. Skeptics were initially sure they were made up, and that preserved specimens brought to England were hoaxes created by clever taxidermy. Platypuses can only be found in the river, streams, and lakes along the east coast of Australia. It wasn't until knowledge spread and more specimens were examined that people began to believe in platypuses. In the platypus. Gorillas. This is just one of the most fantastic moments of my life. I can't believe I'm sitting here 
surrounded by a group of mountain gorillas. Outside of Africa, these great apes were the subject of rumor for centuries. Think Bigfoot before Bigfoot was even a thing. In around 500 BC, Carthaginian explorer Hanno the Navigator encountered hairy people, who were capable climbers and threw rocks. His interpreters called them gorillae. These may have been gorillas or other great apes, although we can only speculate. Each gorilla has a personality and style of its own. It wasn't until the 19th century that Europeans began to take tales of hairy, man-like creatures seriously, with explorers happening upon them in the jungle. After all, seeing is believing. To see these incredible creatures in the wild, what a humbling gift. It hits me on a gut level, a sense of responsibility and a clear need to protect them. The Huang Kim Turtle. According to Vietnamese legend, 15th century Emperor Le Loi was granted a sword by the turtle god Kim Kui. After carving out Vietnam's independence, Le Loi returned the sword to Kim Kui while sailing on a lake, leading to the lake being named Huan Kim, or the Lake of the Returned Sword. The lake's giant softshell turtles were thought to be just legends, until the 20th century when they were spotted. Sadly, the last known individual, known as Great Grandfather Turtle, died around 2016 meaning the species is possibly extinct. Black swans. As early as the second century in Europe, the expression black swan was used as a metaphor for something that was impossible. After all, all swans are white, except when old world explorers reached Australia, they discovered that real black swans existed. Like their white counterparts, black swans are often used as ornamental birds in ponds in Europe and other continents. These days, black swans have become synonymous with a logical fallacy in reference to the previous expression, or else for events that seem unpredictable, yet are believed to be obvious in hindsight. The giant squid. Then, on the 87th photo, making its film debut. Oh! Stop. 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 The elusive giant. Arguably one of the most famous sea monsters ever, the giant squid has been a fixture of sea legends worldwide, inspiring figures like the Kraken. However, despite its vaunted size, its existence was not confirmed until the late 19th century when specimens were found washed up on shore. Specimens have been reported weighing close to 1,000 pounds. The giant squid is not as heavy, weighing in at around 600 pounds, but they do have far longer arms and even longer feeding tentacles. And even then, giant squids weren't observed in their natural habitat until 2004 due to how deep underwater they live. For this reason, there are still things that remain unknown or unconfirmed about giant squids, keeping its myth alive for a little while yet. People are very interested in this kind of thing, and we need to make people more aware of just how many incredible things there are in our ocean. Shangri-La. Considering the cultural power and proliferation of Shangri-La, it's amazing to think that the legend is so relatively new. The myth didn't begin until 1933, when English author James Hilton published his novel Lost Horizon. In the story, various people crash land in the mountains of Tibet and find a secret utopia called Shangri-La. There are two potential sources for Hilton's unforgettable setting. One is Zhengdian, a Chinese city that actually renamed itself Shangri-La in 2001. Another is the Hunza Valley near the China-Pakistan border, which was personally visited by Hilton and matches many of his physical descriptions. Loch Ness. It's fun watching folklore progress in real time. One of the most famous names in Scottish folklore is undoubtedly Nessie, or the Loch Ness Monster. Every Nessie sighting gets attention and people love getting attention. While everyone knows about old Nessie today, the legend actually goes all the way back to the 6th century, when a hagiographer named Adavnan wrote about the monster in his Life of Columba. The book describes a water beast that attacked and killed a man in front of the titular Irish monk. Loch Ness is indeed a real place found in the northern Scottish Highlands. The loch itself is real. The monster? Well, we'll let you come to your own conclusion. But the question is, are there any sea monsters now? Sherwood Forest. Pretty much smack in the middle of England lies Sherwood Forest, which is found in the county of Nottinghamshire. And this was one of the most difficult and dangerous stretches because it was bandit country, Sherwood Forest. The forest stretches over 1,000 acres and attracts hundreds of thousands of tourists each year. 
Part of this is because of its natural beauty, and part is owing to its association with Robin Hood. I want to know how the legend of Robin Hood came about. It has long been said that Sherwood Forest was the home of Robin Hood and his merry men. This association dates back to 1420, when the Lincoln Cathedral manuscript mentioned that, quote, Robin Hood in Sherwood stood. It's also said that Robin Hood slept in Major Oak, a real oak tree that lies in Sherwood and dates back 1,000 years. The Major Oak is said to be between 800 and 1,000 years old. Mount Olympus. Serving as the highest mountain in Greece, Mount Olympus stretches over 9,000 feet into the air and lies near the Aegean Sea. This mountain is of great importance in ancient Greek mythology, as it was said to house the 12 Olympian gods. This sacred mountain is the second tallest in the Balkan Peninsula. One particular landmark is Stefani, which serves as the mountain's steepest peak. This peak is also known as the Throne of Zeus, who served as king of the gods and as the god of sky and thunder. The summit of Mount Olympus was finally reached in 1913. Unfortunately, there was no sign of the Olympic gods. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Troy The Iliad concerns the Trojan War, a skirmish found in Greek mythology that was fought between the Greeks and Trojans. The existence of the Trojan War is still up for debate, but there doesn't seem to be much question behind the existence of Troy itself. It's real, and it's called Hisarlik. The reality of Troy was confirmed in 1871, when the site was excavated by archaeologists Heinrich Schliemann and Frank Calvert. But they didn't just find one city. Troy is so old that settlements have been built on top of previous ones, resulting in nine distinct and numbered layers. As he dug at various times over the next 20 years, he uncovered not one city, but nine different settlements, each built upon the other. Most agree that Homer's Troy is Troy VII, which dates from about 1300 to 950 BCE. For Schliemann, the treasure proved beyond a shadow of doubt that the Troy of legend really existed. Which of these myths do you personally connect with the most? Let us know in the comments. I'd have trouble staying asleep, and I would notice that I would have unusually vivid dreams once I finally got to sleep. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.